So many houses have got a roof space lying idle and in this video I'll quickly take you through the steps that I took to take a property like this and transform it into something more like this. Hi there, my name is Jeremy and after training as an architect I spent my entire career doing attics, extensions, renovations, property purchases, buy-to-lets, Airbnbs and so on. And I'm going to try and share all that learning with you over the coming months, hopefully with a series of these videos. And today I'm going to start with this attic conversion I've just recently completed. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know in the comments what you think. So the first thing I did when I was looking at this was the preparation and the survey to check its feasibility. Take some measurements or get hold of a plan if there's one available. Measure out as accurately as you can the space. I'll aim to create some drawings. Sometimes I'll use a pen and paper but usually I'll use a, a simple CAD software, something like SketchUp which you can download for free and I'll design the basic layout, single story bungalow, it's a case of adding a stair. If it's a two story house and you're adding a third story, there's a little bit of more complicated things to do with things like fire doors and such like. But the reason we need these drawings, aside from actually being able to build it, is to get our council permissions in the UK, that is planning permission, which is the way it looks from the outside. So if you've got dormer windows or roof lights, for example, that have an impact to your neighbours in terms of what they can see and the privacy issues, then you'll need some form of planning permission, be it that or permitted development, which is a little bit less onerous. And you'll need a building warrant for sure. And a building warrant is all the things like fire escape, electrical, plumbing and drainage, if you're going to put an ensuite or a bathroom upstairs, width of stairs, all of that requires compliance with the building regulations which you can download and get all the information from. Another thing you will have to do is get a structural engineer and they will help you with the structural aspects. With that, all that in place, it's time to start the build. So whether you do it yourself or whether to get a builder is uh, always a question. Usually it's a hybrid of the two. If you're watching this video, I would imagine you're interested in doing a lot of the work yourself. For example, a demolitions is something most people can do themselves. And as you can see from this uh, walk around, this house has definitely been neglected, but it's perfect for an attic conversion. It's just got a roof ladder going up into uh, an attic space which has never been used. It's filled full of spiders and cobwebs and horrible things like that. And then it's a case of cutting out the hole to form the stair as the first part of the build. But before you do that, making sure everything is propped and safe with acro props or something similar to make sure that nothing falls down. Setting out the stairwell and all the heights is uh, the most important thing and the bit that you should spend the most time on at the start because everything comes from that and once you've got that sorted out you can then start looking at the stud work and framing upstairs uh, here i am strengthening in the floor as per the structural engineer's requirements because the, the timber sizes weren't the right uh, the right depth so we needed to to strengthen them up and then the framing for the walls and the partitions that forms the room upstairs. The only bits I paid for on this were the actual roofing itself. And I also send it, sent off my drawings to a stair manufacturer. I didn't want to do the roofing just because of the obvious reasons of lack of experience. And when it goes wrong, you know, it goes really wrong with roofing. And the stair, I wanted something that was absolutely machine made. So I created some shop drawings, which I sent off to them. The stair was delivered prefabricated and I just glued it together on site, 
to form the staircase which was done in oak um, there was a form of lacquer that was on it to give it the finish that I wanted and then I gave a second coat once it was complete. The services were a case of extending from the existing services in the house but I did get an electrician to sign off the additional circuits and a gas engineer to do the gas connection and commission the boiler although I installed the boiler uh, itself. Uh, I needed a bigger boiler and I decided to put the boiler upstairs but um, sometimes your existing boiler is absolutely fine uh, if it's just a couple more radiators you want to run up there. The windows I ordered fairly early on because of the long delivery time and uh, you can go for some UPVC ones. I wanted to get very big windows to let the maximum amount of light so I went for these Swedish windows from a company called Nordan which are absolutely beautiful and uh, they were able to give me the sizes that I wanted whereas something like UPVC would have been a much smaller window with lots more mullions. The insulation was a two-part process with uh, rigid insulation between the rafters and then insulated plasterboard over the top to give that requirement that we have in the building regulations and the insulation qualities in that room are amazing. It's very, very warm. Then it was a case of just plasterboarding the walls and putting chipboard floor down on the leveled floor. Then I uh, decided to plaster it myself because we were in lockdown at the time. I couldn't get a plasterer. Uh, but plastering is something that you might want to consider getting someone in to do because obviously if it doesn't look right you cannot hide it. It's a very noticeable thing. The flooring was a lacquered oak engineered floor that went down on top of the chipboard. It's a floating floor which uh, enables it to expand and contract. Uh, and then I had the en suites where I decided to keep a fairly simple tiling just because the spaces were small and I didn't think it was worth making um, a big statement with something uh, which was a fairly simple little room. Uh, then it was a case of just putting the mist coat on the plaster and then painting it all and uh, the finished effect was trying to get as much light in as possible and using uh, roof lights on the over the stair to try and link the downstairs with the upstairs to try and make it an overall fluid experience where the upstairs of the house becomes part of the downstairs as well. That was a sort of whistle tour of the attic conversion I recently completed. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did like this video, please help me to make more by liking and subscribing. And, and of course, if, if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. I'll also be making more content on this and other similar projects where I'll go into more detail in some of the things I've, I've covered here. Well, thanks a lot for watching to the end and I hope to see you in the next one.